My hallelujah belongs to you. Ahaya. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. Yes, you do. You deserve it. My hallelujah belongs to you. Ahaya. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. My hallelujah belongs to you. So I come to speak about this and I'm going to let this brother here speak first before me. Let it play. The reason that it is sometimes felt by some within the, the body of Christ that, it, that it's wrong is because it's based on vanity. You're trying to make yourself more attractive, you know, in, in a vain way, and so therefore it should be done. Well, uh, I think it's worth thinking about a little bit because we really can't find any uh, specific condemnation in school. It definitely is worth thinking about and looking into. So we're talking about wearing makeup now and for um, truth, you know, I wear makeup. I, I don't um, condemn it wearing makeup. I wear a little eye pencil because I feel like my eyebrow doesn't come out far enough However, everything in moderation. Um, what I have learned, I will share with you. Please allow me to share with you from my life experience, from my spiritual journey and my growth in, in the kingdom of heaven with me being a part of the bride of Christ, what I have learned. And I'm going to start off with saying, each one teach one. I normally don't go by notes, but this time I jot down a few. And each one teach one. Now, Prophetess Lucy over there, Prophetess Natasha over there, Prophetess Nato over there, Prophet, Prophet Love or Prophet Alfredo or Prophet... Um, Rodrigo's uh, prophet and prophetess, man of God and women of God, each one teach one. So someone might come to me and say, hey, you know, Anna, um, this thing that you're doing or this thing that you did or what you said or what you're saying is not right. For instance, um, there was one time I said, embrace the darkness that I, I entered into the darkness and I was saying to other people not to be afraid of the darkness and they should embrace the darkness. Well, nobody came to check me about it, but I checked myself, you know, I look into it. Maybe I was wrong. I'm still looking into it. You know, I know back then I was coming from a place where I was saying just not to be fearful of anything, you know. But there is another side to that. God did say, let there be light, you know. And we know that darkness is in so many uh, degrees, you know. You got darkness in so many different dimensions. And as we are in the 3D dimension right now, some of us are already in the fifth dimension. So you would have five levels of darkness, right, that, that you can see if you got the eyes to see it. But I'm going to only deal with 3D right now. So you would have darkness within us where we would be like um, ignorant of something or things or just ignorant. Maybe we have a lot of evil. We do a lot of evil things. So that's considered darkness. And I don't want to embrace e evil, you know. Um, so to say embrace the darkness no, I embraced the light, you know. I also uh, was shown in a dream by God a person that had this entity in him. And the entity was yelling and screaming, we love the dead, we love the dark. And the entity was really yelling at me in the dream for uh, me to be afraid 
it was yelling at me trying to have me to be afraid because I wasn't afraid you know but he wanted me to be afraid so and he kept yelling we love the dead we love the dark like get out of here we love the dead we love the dark I guess because when I interpret my own dream I was a ray of light like I was light coming into their darkness and they don't want that you know so um it from that dream it was uh, reveal to me that no I don't want to embrace wickedness I don't want to embrace evil I don't want to embrace ignorance I don't want to really embrace the dark but I know that I don't want to be afraid of it either I, I should not be afraid of it because uh, my love my Lord have already conquered death and so um, we're not afraid of it so we're not afraid to speak truth as well we're not afraid to go deep into things like um the bride of christ here on this uh earth wearing a lot of masks so when we wear makeup and when we wear a lot of it it is like putting a mask over your face and i saw that with a precious precious sister of mine just last night sure. as we Although were uh, I makeup, was enjoying I you deserve it my hallelujah belongs to you I went to sleep singing that song and I woke up singing that song and that's all because of my beloved sister there um was on I, I wasn't on the live I caught it and this was like um 12 1 2 2 2 a.m in my morning so yeah, i'm a little bit tired now but so i made a comment over there i want to pull it up i want to pull it up i made a comment and someone let's let's pull up the comment please uh yeah Oh, I made a bunch of comments, but my first comment was emoji, purr, 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 heart, 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 love, 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 gold heart, gold heart, red heart, pink heart. Oh my God, what beautiful face. Miss Beautiful Bride of Christ, you should keep your face just like that. You should keep your face just like that uh for the lord at all times just like this for the lord you don't need no eye pencil red lips i beg oh god i'm apologizing i have to say that before i even watch this video but now i will go and listen so then when i listened and i was in there for i don't know maybe two hours or or so and we were praising and worshiping God it was wonderful and so on that particular comment of mine is amazing that someone comes by the name of cave K C A V E or Chevelle Chevelle Smith 2737 and she comes and she says who are you to tell her how to dress lady the Holy Ghost is the one who talks to her and addresses her, so she don't need you to dictate and tell her how to dress. So keep that to yourself. Now, remind you now, my comment said nothing about dressing. I simply said, oh my God, what beautiful face. Miss Beautiful Bride of Christ, you should keep your face just like that for the Lord, just like that for the Lord. You don't need eye pencil, red lips, and oh my God. And this one, she comes to chew me out. And when she said, you need to keep it to yourself, lady, you don't need to tell this um, woman of God how to dress. The Holy Ghost is the one who talks to her and tell her how to dress. So I comment back again and I said to Miss Smith 2737 encouragement I am her sister that's who I am she is everything to me through Christ read on I said nothing about her dressing all I said was such beautiful face she is indeed a true natural beauty 
and she doesn't need to look like the world to be beautiful. She really doesn't need lipstick and makeup. She doesn't need it at all. She looks much better even without it. And in all truth and respect, that's how the bride of Christ should look, just like this, without a face mask. That's my next comment. She comes back after that and she says, she don't need you to tell her nothing what to put on or off. The Holy Spirit is with her already to do that. So pause. Well, let me say to this um, precious sister here that is basically attacking me for no real good reason. She's attacking me for no real good reason. Let me take a pause and say, because she said the Holy Spirit is already within her to tell her. As the body of Christ, we, we do things in part. So God will give her a piece and give me a piece and give that one a little. And we share amongst each other and we correct each other and we don't take offense. We don't give offense. Um, unnecessarily but I will tell you this one thing about this world that we're living in today everything is truth is offensive now when you tell truth anywhere it could be in your home it could be at your job it could be in your church it could be amongst the the body of Christ and it, what it shouldn't be you know but truth is now an offense for for example with my, um, with my, in my marriage, okay, with my husband, I would say something to him like, um, let me go down and say, find something, something that he did, like, like say, you, you stole my gold coins from the drawer how many years ago, and then you lied and said somebody else stole it. For instance, you know, for instance, example. And say he did steal the gold coins, and we all know he did it. I say, you stole the gold coins, and, and then you blame it on somebody else, and he'll turn around and say, oh, you're always, you're always offending me. You, you, all, you come to, you come to uh, insult me. You're, you're, you're insulting me. How am I insulting you when I'm telling the truth of the matter, you see? So now when we tell truth, it, they're they're actually demons they're demons demons don't like truth just like my dream earlier they don't like the light to be shined so they'll they'll tell you to get out we love the dead we love the dark they don't like the light they don't like truth so uh i'm sorry to say my sister here if i am speaking to my beloved sister in christ the prophetess here that is praying so lovely and looking so beautiful and I said she was beautiful I said something good and and truthful and then you come and you don't like it and you're telling me not to tell her what I'm telling her that simply means that you don't like truth and we know the 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 spirit that doesn't like truth okay we know the spirit the entities devils and demons don't like truth they don't like light they like the dark they like the lies so if i am here once again speaking truth telling my beloved sister that she is beautiful without makeup and she is beautiful without makeup and the lord wanted me to say it to her because apparently the lord wanted her to know this maybe she have a personal thing in herself you know that God uses another sister to say hey my beloved sister you are beautiful without that mask and it is true she is beautiful without the painting here and the painting here and the paint here and the paint here and the jewelry and whatever she doesn't need it none of us do when we are the children of the Most High Yah, and we are filled with His Holy Spirit. We don't need to look like the world. We don't need makeup. God make us radiant and beautiful without it, and that is the truth. So moving on to the last comment, 
after she said she don't need you to tell her nothing what to put on or off the Holy Spirit is with her already to do that then I simply came and I say smiley face thank you I needed you to tell me that I needed you to tell me this may God bless and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you yes and this is my prayer for the one commenting Smith 2737 may God deliver you and cause his face to shine upon you may God lift you up and enlighten you send his angels to encamp around you protect you provide for you guide you and lead you amen So, my hallelujah belongs to you. That's it for the comment. Okay, that, that's it for the comment. And now let me just wrap it up, finish it up. To say, I'm going to read from little notes that I, I jot down. When God instruct you to do or say a thing to someone, you do or say it just like God says it or God tells you to do it. You don't add on and you don't take off. You don't worry about how the person is going to take it, if they're going to be offended, if they're going to be mad. You can't as a, um, a messenger of, of God, as an oracle or a prophet or a prophetess, when God tell you to speak or to do something, it could be big or small, you just do it. We are not here to offend, but however, I've already stated, the truth is considered now an offense. So people take offense to when, when you tell them the truth. But as children of the Most High Yah, we should not be offended when a, a brother or sister tells us something. You know, Now, sometimes they can be wrong about things, but you don't get angry, you don't get mad, you don't get offended, you talk it out, you know? You talk it out. This moment just remind me of when my beloved brother in Christ, Kanye West, said to uh, Minister Farrakhan, he said, I take that as a slight, bro. Let's get on the phone and chop, chop it out. Let's talk about it. Yeah, let's talk. Communication, communication is key, always key. All right? We as the bride of Christ, we should never be quick to take offense or to give offense. Mm. Yes, don't be a quick don't be quick to be offended. Don't even don't be offended. Just don't even take offense to it. Um I must also remind myself not to take offense to things, you know. Whether it's in um the Christian group, whether it's in the church or it's at work or it's at home in your personal life with your neighbors, with your children, with your husband, especially with your wife and your husband. Um, with the pastor on the pulpit just uh, tr don't be offended with things Brush and keep on going right and keep on going ah yes I have come to notice that one so now back to the looking like the world um, the reason why the main reason why makeup is not good especially excessively excessive it's like you you you're looking like the world and the word of god says come out from among them the word of god says come out from among them every oracle of the lord knows this every prophet or prophetess know this line from the bible clearly come out from among them so that's what one of what it means is the meaning is this right come out from among them is it goes long and wide and this is one of it with all the masking remember now remember that god is is a god of truth right god is a god of truth it's not truthful when you put a mask on your face you put on all this um paste and rouge and lips Oh, this reminds me of Big Bird. I'm going to want to talk about this lady, Big Bird, that I used to uh, take care of. But when you put on this, it's, it's a mask. It's not truthful. It's 
not truthful. And then the truth of the matter is a lot of our sisters out here, we look so much better without it anyways. You look so much better without the fake eyebrows and the fake red bright lips and the and the and the hair. If you really are, now we're gonna go there. If you really are a bride of Christ and you are in love with God and you're in love with the cap Calvary with what he did on Calvary. You're in love with God and you know God is in love with you and you know you are the bride of Christ. You know that doesn't matter to him. You know this doesn't matter. You come on with this bright red lips and these long fingernails. Another thing, those long fingernails ain't going to Calvary. Those long fingernails ain't going to Calvary. And uh, it's FMA. Lolo Kosan, Tishiki, Fime, Bebe, 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 Saya. Kas FMA. Bride of Christ. You don't need long fingernails. Don't, don't turn God on. It's actually a turn off. Yes. Don't you know by now? You should know by now. If you don't know by now, you I'm here to tell you. Okay. It's of the world. Come out from among them. All this long weave you want to go buy. 300 and 400 is, is vain. It's vanity. And you put this here on. Stop doing it. I used to do it in my young days. I never liked when I was doing it, but when I was seeking my deliverance a few years ago, I had a head full of, this was about four years ago, maybe three, I had a head full of beautiful weave that was done, and I paid so much to get it done, right, and it, 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 it was... It was what it was. It wasn't real. It wasn't mine. And it was done and I had to pay for it. And it was worldly. And and I, fe I felt like when God was trying to touch me, God was trying to touch me and it wasn't penetrating because of the weave, the fake hair that I had on top of my head and I had these fake eyelashes and I had the lipstick and I had the fake nails and I just knew that my love couldn't reach me because I was under all this fake thing and God showed me and I took it off and I took the tracks out I pulled the hair out and that's when this began I took the nails off I got the lashes As a matter of fact I was in church one day and we were praising and it, going on in church so much I was crying because it was good cry and my eyelashes started to come off just from um, the tears and there as I was sitting there I also started to get the message you know no see now I can I can cry freely yes I can cry about the goodness of my God and the love of my God I can cry freely now without worrying about staying in my makeup and you know so at the end of the day it's like hey God don't need that God ain't looking for us to be looking like the world no he's looking for us to look like just how he made us and at the end of the day we look better without it anyway. Yes, at the end of the day, we look better without it anyway. You really don't need it. You need to know this. This is really the this is really all that God wants you to know, my beloved sister. This is all God wants me to know and remember and keep in mind because even I get tempted sometimes I have a uh, something here so and I want to cover it up with makeup I want to cover it up with makeup and I have to say God give me strength deal with it Lord deal with it for me so it goes even for me as well to remind ourselves that hey we look better without it anyway right yes so I had jot down here yes 
don't do like the world do. Um, when you're going through real, oh yes, this was another thing. Now, uh, when you're fighting these strong, wicked, evil altars, you do need to strip down naked. And when I say naked, I don't mean naked clothes off. I mean naked meaning, yes, the weave out, the fingernails off, the eyelashes off, the makeup off, the eyebrow off, the so-called beauty of the world. Take your rings off, take your necklace off, put your diamonds down in the drawer. When you going up against some wicked altars, you don't need all the bracelets and the bangles and stuff. You got to strip down and put on the armor of God. And the armor of God is not your diamonds and your rubies and your pearls. It's not physical like that your diamonds and your rubies and the pearls is a uh, oh my bible is there the phone is on top of my bible i was gonna get it i put it on my head oh <laughs> but all right so you put on the armor the full armor you get into fasting and praying you get into the word of god and you keep your eyes on the lord yeah you don't you don't put on a long weave and makeup when you fight in some real spiritual battles you see and then but by the time you fight you finish and you win guess what you 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 will look at your diamonds and your rubies in the drawer and you you don't even feel for it you would look at your wigs and you say burn them let me be as natural as God made me it's a freedom it's a beautiful thing to be as natural as possible. I have said it once. I have said it twice. I've said it a few times before. Okay. Fight like a real soldier. That's another thing when we go to war. You ever see a soldier in war when you see these, even the ladies when they go to war. You see them putting on wigs and eyelashes and eyebrows and, 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 and red lips. To go to go on the battlefield a matter of fact when you really are a soldier for the Lord you look in your ugly eh you look in your ugly you're not eh so sorry make it you see me mm. Mm. and you don't mind you don't mind you don't even mind you know you're on the right side you're doing the right thing and for righteousness sake let them look at you and call you ugly because you know where you're going when you finish with your ugly all right yeah. so down here too another thing you know these indians are over there i, I think is it india hold on was it in india are Is it China? Well, where where is somewhere over in China, India, Asia, over there, where these men? Um, I remember about 15 years ago, it was a bunch of men that they gave up their homes. They like living in the streets and they don't own anything, and they live a very humble which most people would say impoverished life where they don't have clothes they live off of the mercy of others and people laugh at them and like you know they look dirty in the streets and stuff but the truth is they know something and what they know is that the less you have here when you give up your life here that's why jesus christ say take up your cross and follow me will you give your life for me he gave his life for you will you give your life for me give up this life give up this life you give up your clothes you give up your house you give up your car you give up your money and sit in the corner of the street and say now god is you and me whatever you give somebody to give me whatever fall from the sky i eat i eat that's you giving your life for god you said now i will live for you let me do your work there is other people that would say oh like my precious sister she says the gospel is free but the means of taking it is expensive and she's right it's true 
You know, the gospel is free, but the means of taking it. So when God will put you in a position and he will give you the means and the money, the ways to go about. So if she, if God put her in a position that she needs to travel from country to country and she needs to pay her entourage and she needs to pay hotel fees and all of that, God will provide money for her. That is for her. You know, for somebody else, it might not be that. It might just be you need to sit on the corner and say hallelujah for the rest of your life every day hallelujah if that's the position that god give you are you willing to give up your life you know are you willing to put your um your will and want your ways are you will willing to put that down to say god i will do your will let me do you let me do you, Lord. Let me do you. Wherever you want me to go, let me go. Wherever, whatever you need me to do, let me do. Not what I want to do. Not what I, what, where I want to go. You know. So we um, got on different subjects about this and that, and you know, come right back around. Though at the end of the day, I had came to speak about the makeup. And it was not about dressing and how you dress. And I'm pretty sure the same young lady that came and commented, she probably couldn't sit through 10 minutes of this video. Most of us can't sit, sit through even 10 minutes of this video. But for anybody who came and sit through it, God bless you. And I hope you get the message. And um, it will uh, be a blessing to you and others. I must say, God, I came. This is Anna Lee. I came, I touch. Now let the peace of the Most High Yah that is within me stays within me. Till next time. Ciao.